Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Cheap, Nasty and Thrilling. Uh, Not really, it's Cheap, Tasty and Filling. Yes, I'm back. And this episode is all about leftovers, specifically leftover mashed potato. Yes, I made a mound of mashed potato last night. We had sausage and mash. And I did think ahead because I knew I'd be making a video. So I thought, make extra and then do something with it. So that's what I'm going to do here today. But this is a bonus video, this episode, because I'm going to be showing you three things to do with leftover mash. So without further ado, let's get into the kitchen and get cooking. (laughs) Lovely, lovely leftovers. Mash. So I'm making my world famous mashed potato omelette. I've got mashed potato, three eggs, a roughly chopped pepper, onion, some frozen peas, some cheese, salt and pepper and some olive oil. It's going to be so quick and tasty and we're having it for our dinner. I've got a little bit of olive oil in my non-stick tea fowl. I'm going to start by sautéing the peas, the peppers and the onions. Just pop them in. Give them a stir. And let them cook. Obviously, if you're the kind of person that likes your peppers really soft, then you'd cook them for a little bit longer. If you were doing this, you could use leftover veg from a previous meal if you wanted. Then it would be like a bubble and squeak omelette. We like our peppers fairly chunky. I'm not gonna blast these with heat. I'm just gonna soften them till they're heated through. The peas need to cook. That's the thing with frozen veg. They should cook for about six minutes. So while that is cooking, We're going to move on to combining the egg and the potato. All I'm going to do is whisk up the eggs. Once those are whisked up, I'm going to add them to the potato. Let's move that into the center and just give it a combine. And you'll find that the potato starts to break down. It would be easier to do this in a larger bowl. Now you might notice that I leave my skins on when I mash potato, but there's no rule book says that you have to do that. I prefer to get as much fibre as I can in the diet. I can hear those veggies sizzling away. They're on a low heat. You'll find that the mash starts to take on a creamy appearance as you do this. If you want to add seasoning, you can do at this stage. I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. It doesn't look very appetizing at the moment, but it will do, I can assure you. Okay, back to the veg. Give it a little stir. Now at this stage, what you want to do is get your grill on because you're going to be putting this under a grill to brown the top. So you want your grill preheated and ready. Now they've been cooking for a good few minutes now and the onions and the peas are just just starting to pick up a little bit of colour. The peppers are still firm but I like a good crunch with the peppers so 
that's fine by me. I'm just evenly spreading it about. Now, we then take the mixture, the egg and potato mixture, and we pour it on. Pour it evenly around. And then we spread it. Bring in the edges. Spread it around just so it incorporates the veggies into the potato and egg mixture. Don't worry what it looks like at the moment, doesn't matter. Spread it around, bring your edges in again just to incorporate those bits. Add your cheese. Give it a test. So if it feels as though it's firming up, which it does, it's time to pop it under the grill until it's golden brown. There we have it golden and bubbling and nice and solid. It's more like a sort of frittata or an American style omelette. This is a quick meal. This is now ready to eat. Let's chow down. Mashed potato omelette. Woo, lovely. Lovely. Mm. What happened to yours? Mine, is Mine fell apart. Yours is beautifully presented. Mine <laughs> fell apart. Perfect. Mm. Mm. It's just perfect comfort food and it's so quick. You saw how quick it is. It takes the best part of 10 minutes to make. It's lovely. And the um, pepper has still got bite in it, which is nice. It's just starting to go soft. You can use any veggies. You could use the leftover veggies, make it into a bubble and squeak omelette. I mean, it sort of is, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, so there you go. Love the bo bubble and squeak. We used to do fabulous bubble and squeak. Well, I'll do it again. It's perfect after a roast, you know, not roast with vegetables and oh yeah. So we're going to eat this now, and it's on to the next recipe for you. Good morning. It's the morning after the night before. I've got another very quick recipe. This is the second one of how to use mashed potato, leftover mash. As you can see, I've got a quantity of mashed potato and I've still got another portion as well, which we're gonna do something else with. But this morning for breakfast, I'm going to make some potato cakes. These are a sort of Irish style potato cake. And the ingredients are really simple. Leftover mash, salt and pepper, olive oil, some flour. I'm going to serve this with scrambled eggs for breakfast. So I've got some eggs at the back there. Let's get on and make these. So the mash is quite cold. Um, mash can go quite stiff when it's cool. So we're going to need to work this into a form of a dough. First thing, season 
good amount of black pepper. You don't have to use black pepper, you can use white pepper. You could use a little bit of chili if you wanted something spicy. We love good old plain black pepper and salt. I've got some sea salt. You can omit the salt if you want to. And then a little splash of olive oil. Just a little splash. You can use melted butter if you like. I'm going to add a dessert spoon, a heaped dessert spoon of flour, plain flour. I'm going to reserve the flour for rolling out. I'm going to go in with the spoon to begin with and I'm just going to start incorporating the flour. Sort of using a chopping motion just to press the flour in. Now it's difficult for me to give you amounts because I tend to do this by eye. If you add too much flour you're going to end up with a sort of floury gluey sort of consistency which is not particularly desirable so err on the side of caution to begin with but you're looking for a, a doughy texture I guess a little bit like a shortbread dough or cookie dough The reason I'm using this sort of chopping action, sorry about the noise, the reason I'm using this chopping action is it, it sort of easily combines the flour. If you just stir it, you could end up with pockets of flour. That's feeling quite good. You should be able to judge whether it's sticky or too sticky. I'm sort of pressing it now just to make sure everything's really combined, that the salt and pepper is combined, that the flour is combined. I don't know whether you can see, but it it's almost like a, a shortbread dough. If you're familiar with shortbread dough, of course, you might not be. That feels quite good. I'm just going to gather it up with the spoon to see whether it starts to form a dough that will stick together, that will, you know, roll out quite well. That looks quite good. Now with clean hands, you can go in and just have a feel Sorry about the noise. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's okay. It seems to be holding together quite nicely. I think we're ready to roll it out. So I've got my rolling pin. I've got a little bit of flour on the board here. I've also got a plate over here, which actually I'm just going to put a little bit of flour onto that. I also need a knife as well. Bit of flour on my rolling pin. Let's take the dough. And let's roll it out. In terms of thickness, well, whatever you want really. I'm going to make these about, I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, three quarters of an inch thick, not sure. I'm just making them a bit of flour on top. Oh. 
making it into a circle, patting it into shape. making sure it's as even as possible. I think that will do. Now, just a word, you could add to this, you could add chopped onion, you could add cheese, you could add any ingredients that you fancy. You could add some leftover veg and make it into a sort of bubble and squeak. Um, but I'm just leaving them plain like this. I'm going to cut them in half. Into quarters. Not very even, but who cares? I'm going to place them onto my plate. There we are, four potato cakes ready for dry frying. Yes, dry frying. So I'm using my Tefal non-stick. Now I'm gonna be very honest with you, if you've not got a non-stick, you may find this process difficult. I don't advise using any oil. So the heat is on. Turn it up quite high to begin with, just to get the, the pan hot. I've got a good spatula specifically for non-stick use. I find the best way to check if something is hot is hover your hand over and if it's starting to feel hot, which that isn't just yet, with the tea file pans the little ring of dots tends to disappear once it's up to temperature. That's starting to feel warm. Once it's kind of starting to get hot just turn the heat down to a medium heat. So we don't want them to burn on the outside and not be hot in the center. Okay. Pop them in. Because you're not using any oil, you're not gonna hear any sort of sizzling sounds to begin with, so what I do is just give them a, a little move around. And I guess they're probably going to take, I don't know, a few minutes per side. You want them to be heated through properly and you want them to be brown. They'll go a pleasing color. I don't know whether you can hear, but you can hear that they are clearly starting to cook on the underside because there's a rough sound as you move them. You don't want to move them until they are really starting to, to feel as though they've sealed in on one side. You know, with cooking, there are all sorts of senses that you use. You know, you're using your smell, your eyes, and you're also listening as well. When you're hearing things start to crackle and pop, you can tell that the heat is getting in there and it's having an effect. So what you can do is decide to, to flip one over to see how it's doing. Ah, perfect. That's exactly the kind of look that we're going for. Ah yes, that's very good. Notice how I'm shaking my spatula to get underneath. And then I'm flipping in one go. They look really good.
things to consider if your potato mixture was too wet um, they would start to spread if you did decide to use oil that also may encourage a little spreading where they don't keep their shape so this kind of mixture this kind of um, mixture between potato and flour that's just right and also the action of the, the flour on the outside of the potato cakes um, helps to keep them together. This is the beauty of a non-stick pan. Please don't start having a go at me saying they're not environmentally friendly. If you're a cook and you want a good non-stick experience, the Tefal experience is probably the best. I've tried others and they you've had to use shed loads of fat, basically, to keep them non-stick. And, um, you know, I, I don't like doing that. I don't want to use loads of fat in my cooking and sautéing. I mean, in effect, what you're doing is you're toasting these in the frying pan. You can hear in the background the sound of the, the heating boiler, so I'm not sure whether you can hear the, the pops and cracks from this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip another one to have a look. Ah, that's lovely. They are looking good, I'm sure you'll agree. Oh. So they are absolutely perfect. I mean, that's really exactly how they should look. So what I'm going to do now, because they're, they're nice and brown on the outside, I don't want them to burn any further. I'm going to turn the heat down, right down onto low and just let them really heat through. And that will give me time to scramble some eggs and serve up breakfast for Paul and I. So we've got some potato cakes with a little bit of scrambled egg on the side. They look very professional. Well, I'm pleased with them. In fact, I think the face of Jesus in mine, or at, very, or at the very least, Kate Bush, yeah, Look. maybe. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah. Mm, how lovely. Yeah. I'm going to eat it now. You're going to eat it. Does, it does look rather meagre, this breakfast, but... And meagre. maybe not the healthiest of breakfasts, but... Why not? We're using leftovers, and it's going to give us some energy. These look divine. Mm. Are they good? Mm. Very happy. Mmm. Mmm. Well, you've got good protein in the egg, you've got good carbohydrate with the potatoes. There's some fat there as well with the oil. Yeah, nice. They have a soft consistency, the potato cakes. Crisp on the outside, soft in the centre. They're quite plain. And you could flavour them however you wanted, like I said before. Mm. But the egg adds to it, doesn't it? They're very They're pleasant. Scrambled eggs. They're very pleasant. I mean, they're ideal as an accompaniment to something else. So if you like bacon and eggs, perfect with bacon and eggs. Baked beans they'd be good with. We could have baked beans, actually, Paul. Yeah, you could have done baked yeah. beans, Richard. If you don't put any um, sort of other flavourings in them and things, you could have them with jam. You could. And the thing to always think about, as I said before, is the amount of flour. Don't use too much flour or else it will taste floury. just floury and horrid. So you've just got to be frugal with the flour. Mm. We mm. used to get them years and years ago. We used to get the Ian Rankin ones, and they remind me of those. Potato falls. Falls, yeah. yeah. Mm. These are lovely. Mm. So there we go, we're going to chow down. 
and I'll see you shortly for the next, the final instalment of what to do with that leftover mash. What's the next one? It's a secret. It's a secret. Mm. He's not telling. Mm. Carry on watching. So we're here for the final, final recipe with the leftover mash, the last bit of leftover mash. Leftover mash, little bit of cheese. I've got a little bit of full fat soft cheese in here. Very small amount. Some salt and pepper. That's it. This is simply going to be baked mashed potato. Now, you might have heard of Duchess potatoes, where you cream the mash and you pipe it and then you bake it. Well, this is the same as that really, except I'm just gonna put it into a bowl and bake it all in one go. No piping involved. So let's combine these ingredients and show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start by putting some salt and pepper. You don't have to use salt. You don't have to use pepper. You could use herbs. You could use anything really, any flavoring you want. I'm going to add the cream cheese. It's probably about, I don't know, a few teaspoons, you know. I'm going to add a splash of oat milk, just a splash. I'm going to mix it with a fork. I'm just mashing with a fork, mashing and stirring. I don't know whether you're like me, but I don't mind my mash being a little rough. Some people complain if it's not utterly creamed. And there's something I like about sort of smashed up potatoes. I kind of, uh, I guess we like quite rustic food in its natural form without being too over-processed. We do eat a little bit of processed food, as you know. But there's something about potato when it's just baked, simply baked. I'm not creaming these like I would for Duchess potatoes. But I have loosened them a little bit with the milk. Okay, I'm going to add half the cheese. This is such a small amount of cheese, it's hardly anything really. But I'm going to add half of that. I'm going to reserve the rest for the top. Let's just mash that in. I'm transferring it to this Denby, which is oven proof. It's just the right size for this amount of mash. I'm just going to spread it around. I'm going to give it a good fork over. Really rough up the surface. So when it cooks, we get some nice, crunchy, crispy bits. Finish that with the rest of the cheese. And I'm going to bake this in an oven at 200 degrees C, a fan oven until it's golden brown. So there we have it, baked mashed potato with a sprinkling of cheese on top, golden and gorgeous, hot from the oven. And you need to try and guess what I'm gonna be serving this with. It's so glamorous in this house. I'm serving it with fish fingers and baked beans.
Yes. People think we're posh, we're not. Let's serve this. really creamy. With a lovely crunch on the top. Perfect for fish fingers and baked beans, perfect. Notice the portion control, we're not going over the top. Oh dear, that one fell apart, oh well. So Paul, fish finger supper, fish finger baked mash and baked beans. How delicious, how posh, how decadent. <laughs> it's got cheese on it. It has got cheese on the top and it goes really creamy when you bake it, but it has a nice crispy crust on the top. Mm. Yum. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I do love baked beans. So, Paul, how much are the fish fingers? There's a packet of 20 and we've just got four each. Uh, Can you remember? They were 150, I think. Mm. So, mash would it be about 25p. Baked bean tin, 35p. Yeah. And how much for? Eight fish fingers. What did I say? One pound fifty. Twenty. My head's not working. Eight. Fifty. Mm. I can't work it out. I can do count that, but I can't work it out. Inexpensive. Seventy-five, sixty, sixty-three p. Ish. Inexpensive meal, you know, and that is quite filling. What we'll do, I mean, today's food has been potato cakes in the morning with eggs, a vegetable soup with sandwich at lunch, and then this for the evening, and then we'll probably have some fruit and yogurt later. So that's not bad, really. Well, we usually have cereal in the morning instead of potato cakes, mm. wouldn't we? I'd have bran flakes and you'd have oh, those alpen. Those potatoes are lovely. So we're going to eat this. Thank you for watching this episode on mashed potato. Mm. I do like mashed potato. Are you going to do another mashed potato one? No, that's There's so good. many things you can do with mashed yeah, potato. But the viewers need to come up with their creative ideas of their own. This is a catalyst. Could you use it for a face mask? No, Paul. Who would do that? What a waste of potato. What a waste of potato, Paul. <laughs> so say goodbye, say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Mm.
Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Watch all the adverts as well. Bye. Too late now. <laughs> but do watch the adverts. We finished now, Paul. Or at least the first We're finished thirty now. seconds of the it's advert. Finished. Or the whole advert if it's less than. I'm switching seconds. off now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.